All right, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Borkor, your host for this episode where I've got another car review. As you can see behind me, a brand new Volkswagen ID4. It's a 2022 model year, of course. They're coming out in Canada later on this summer. I was lucky enough to get this from Volkswagen Canada. A big shout out and thank you to them for letting me get use of this vehicle. It's actually a US vehicle for only a couple of days. So this is a fairly quick review. So thanks very much for taking the time to listen to me. Let me get right into some of the overview of the vehicle. So all new for 2022 model year is the Volkswagen ID4. And I'm gonna apologize if you're getting some wind noise. It's uh, gonna storm a little bit. So I'm trying to get this video shoot in before I can. And there's not really many places to film uh, in my subdivision that's kind of going to be quiet. But if you look at the exterior of the ID4, it represents a nod to the future with a look that could only be Volkswagen. Of course, at the front, you have the big logo. At the back, you've got ID4, large LED headlights, which is in keeping with a lot of their models nowadays. Um, and it really is a nice, clean, utilitarian look, I'll say. Um, you know, it's got all the uh, methods for easy entrance and exit through the doors and easy loading and loading for the hatch. It's really a purpose-built vehicle for people that want a compact SUV, that want some roominess, that maybe have some kids or some things to lug around, maybe tow a small trailer, all this kind of stuff, without spending a fortune on some of the bigger, more luxurious uh, all-electric SUVs that we've seen come out so far. And I think the ID4 does extremely well at fitting that utilitarian uh, space. Now, as I mentioned, the ID4 is a compact SUV. It kind of fits right in the middle of that segment. Um, it's a little bit shorter than the Tiguan from Volkswagen, and it's a little bit uh, lower as well. But, you know, I find the ride height to be really nice. You sit up high and great visibility in this vehicle. Now, the ID4 is built on a new steel chassis designed to be strong and agile. It's certainly not going to win any Monaco Grand Prix races, but it will get you from A to B in a safe and sturdy manner. It features strut type front suspension on lower control arms with coil springs, dampers and an anti-roll bar in the rear. It uses multi-link rear axle with coil springs and some dampers as well in a roll bar. Um, it's just three and a half turns of lock to lock to, uh, to turn that in a radius of 10.2 meters. Now I like the clean lines of the ID4. It's not going to turn a lot of heads because it's going to blend in very nicely with existing compact SUVs that are on the market today. And I think that's a good thing that Volkswagen's done. They've wanted to go all electric and design something from the ground up, but not really kind of make it glaring that, hey, I'm electric. Do it in a nice subtle approach. Now for the powertrain, it's, this is a rear wheel drive single motor version that I have right now up from the US, but we will get both a rear wheel drive and an all wheel drive version as well available in Canada, same in the US. Now they're all underpinned by an 82 kilowatt hour battery pack, 77 and change usable space, uh, which gives an EPA estimated range of 401 kilometers uh, or under um, 200, about 250 miles or so, something like that. Uh, which is, I think, very adequate for, for the large, vast majority of day uses, and I will talk about road tripping in a bit. But so far, you know, um, it's got enough torque and power to get me going. This is the single motor, and the single motor gives um, about 201 horsepower with 229 pound-feet of torque, and when you bump that up to the all-wheel drive, you get about 300 horsepower and three and change of torque as well. So it does get you going. A lot of people will probably, especially in inclement weather uh, areas, opt more for the all-wheel drive, but I think the for the price point of the rear-wheel drive, which I'll talk about at the end of the show, I think it's really got a nice um, uh, acceleration curve. Now for charging, this does support 11 kilowatts of onboard AC charging up to, so certainly will full charge over a night span or up to 80 or 90% what you choose. Does support up to 125 kilowatts of DC fast charging. Now it doesn't sound like a lot, especially when you factor in an 80 kilowatt battery. But again, the, I'll, we'll talk about the charging curve in a sec, but it's, it's more than adequate for the vast majority of daily use cases or every couple of days, you know. If you have a level two charger at home, you plug it in, it'll go two or three days probably before you'll need to charge it again. And, you know, as Volkswagen does, as most OEMs recommend going to 80 or 90%, not topping it up unless you're going on a road trip. 
Now, when I picked up this vehicle, it was fully charged. It showed 434 kilometers or 270 miles. Um, I did an initial highway drive of about uh, around 90 kilometers or so um, at about 115 kilometers per hour on the uh, open freeway that we have here outside of Toronto. And uh, the initial uh, efficiency that the, the dash showed was 214 kilowatt hours per kilometer. It's not going to be the most efficient, but again, I don't think Volkswagen is trying to make this the most efficient. They're trying to make this as a utilitarian hauler of people and stuff. Now with regards to charging, as I mentioned, it does have a great charging curve and you can see by this graph that the secret to good charging, especially for road tripping folks, is not what the maximum pull is. Because some people can state I pulled 240 kilowatts or 300 kilowatts or whatever. It's how high you can pull for how long. That's really the secret. And VW has a great charging curve for fast charging in this machine. As you can see, it'll get you from 10 or 20% to 80% in under 30 minutes or around that time, depending on the charger. It does maintain a good pull for a long period of time and then gradually goes down. And again, that's going to translate to a really good road tripping experience where the average family or the average couple or person is going to stop probably for 15 to 20 to 25 minutes anyway to charge, you know, get a break, all that kind of stuff that we do on longer road trips. Uh, and I think this matches uh, that type of use case exactly. Now the interior of the ID4 is very, very well appointed, excuse me. It's got a good use of plastic and non-plastic materials. I think it's fine. Some people get too particular on the materials. Look, it's for a family, it's for a couple, it's for somebody with, that has a dog or whatever, for hauling stuff around. It's that kind of vehicle. And Volkswagen, in order to keep this price competitive, is not going to build a truly luxurious interior. I think it's really nice. You know, so after spending the whole afternoon driving this thing back from where I picked it up and doing some running around, it's very comfortable. The seats have great support. Um, everything is within easy reach from a controls function. Only took me a minimal amount of time to kind of learn the menu system and figure out where things are. Now the base uh, version of the ID4 comes with a 5.3 um, inch uh, cockpit or the digital driver display for the binnacle, which are standard on both trims of the ID4. And it also comes standard with a 10 inch uh, center infotainment or what they call the Discover Pro Touch infotainment display. If you upgrade using the statement package, you'll get the 12 inch Discover Pro Max infotainment display, which is what this model has. And I'll show you a little bit uh, of what that looks like in a sec. Um, it also has voice controls and all kinds of other stuff. You know, you can say my uh, hello ID and all that kind of stuff and, and do some voice commands. I haven't tried it out. Has a wireless app, which I haven't tried. Now sticking with the interior for cargo space, um, this is the package that has the power trunk. So you, it will open and close uh, through a power through the, the remote, uh, through a button um, on one of the doors, or again, just by using your hand and then there's a button on the hatch. But it's got a great use of cargo space for its class. Um, behind just the second row, you've got about 30.3 cubic feet of cargo space, about 858 liters. And if you drop the second row uh, behind the first row, you've got 64.2 cubic feet of space or 1,818 liters with, of course, the seats down. Now, there is no frunk in this. And Volkswagen keeps the front very minimal, uh, easy to find your washer fluid and to check your brake fluid and, and the normal things that you're going to take, uh, check the coolant for the battery system and everything. And that's all really most EV companies want you to do now is basically don't have to think about the maintenance. Just fill up your windshield washer fluid and do some visual checks from time to time. So this is pretty easy to do. So there is no frunk space. They've just kept it minimalistic with, the, um, uh, with all the electronics up front. Now, a couple differences between the US and Canadian versions. As standard for the Canadian versions, because we have our cold temperatures up here, hurrah, um, they will come standard with heated steering wheels, heated side mirrors, and windshield washer nozzles that are heated as well. And of course, folks, why it gets heated windshield, um, which is uh, a great feature if you've never seen it. It's like a defroster for the front, electric defroster for the front windshield. Works extremely well in clearing ice and snow off the windshield. And there's also a onboard heat pump, which has been revamped from the older e-Golf. It's much more efficient, much more technologically advanced than the older one. And that should save some energy as well for cooling and for heating. 
Now for safety and driver assistance packages, Volkswagens, uh, they outfit it adequately. They give you all the common stuff, like their advanced driver uh, technology, which is autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian monitoring, which is standard, the front assist. Blind spot monitoring is great because not only do um, uh, do you, I think, get a beep if you try to change lanes, but there's a big yellow light that shows up on the side of the mirror when a car's in your blind spot. And the side mirrors are huge, which is great. So that's one good bonus from a safety perspective. I really like that. Rear traffic alert, adaptive cruise, as I talked about, in, I'll talk about in the driving. Road sign detections, lane keeping assists, which is okay, travel assist and some other emergency assist stuff. Haven't really looked at it all, but you can check out the website for more, for lots of information. All right, so now let me give you my quick driving impressions. Let's go for a ride and I'll show you how the lane keep assist works and give you my thoughts. All right, so some quick driving impressions on my first drive here in the uh, VW ID4. Um, so far, it's been really pleasant experience. The seats are extremely comfortable, all kinds of positions. I've been playing around. I like sitting nice and high. It's got great visibility all around. Big side mirror so you can really see what's behind you. Um, and all the instrumentation is very easy to look at and to decipher. Um, I'm finding the menu system just a tad laggy as far as, as, as changing screens, I mean. Um, but again, this is an early uh, US, uh, this is a US vehicle, early production. Uh, I mean, they've started delivering them and I think the software will just get better and better over time. But everything works really well, just sometimes you gotta swipe at it and then wait a couple of seconds before it actually slides over. So just a small thing. As far as the driving though, um, it's a very nice, pleasant experience. Very comfortable, absorbs this uh, the road bumps very nicely. Uh, it's a quiet cabin, even with all this glass here, as the whole roof is glass, as you can see, or most of it. Still very quiet. Obviously, the tires are gonna have some impact onto that, but a very pleasant experience. Uh, the steering is, is very nimble. You know, it turns and it reacts. Um, you know, I'm not able to go crazy here on these um, uh, city streets that I'm driving in right now but otherwise it's extremely nice. Um, the road manners are, are very capable. Just before I started recording, I took it, I was on a bit of a bumpy road around an industrial area, took it for a quick spin, and again, handled the bumps very well, um, you know, for a, a vehicle of this class, for a compact SUV. No rattles, nothing shaking, nothing squeaking, but a very pleasant experience. Everything is within reach. Um, I just like, uh, I like everything that it offers, and I'm a big guy. I just notice that it has a armrest here. I love armrests. I'm all about it. Ever since we had our minivan taking long trips, nice to kind of recline back a little bit, take it easy. It's a very comfortable position. All right, so I've activated, activated the lane keep assist, and yeah, I had it on a different setting, so this is much more smoother and keeping in the lane. Uh, I find that about every 10 seconds or so, it asks you to take over the steering, so it's a little quick. Um, but otherwise, keeping it in the lane here, as you can see, is pretty good. It's a fairly windy day. We're going, I'm going into the wind now at this speed, uh, but it's handling it quite well. It's just that you get this reminder about every 10 seconds to take over the steering, and then it'll start beeping at you. And this works quite well. And uh, I just wish the frequency for taking over wasn't as short. But again, it's, it's designed as a level two uh, autonomy to uh, as an assist function, not really so you can sit back and, re and read a book or or uh, you know surf the internet or anything while the car drives. But it does keep a, uh, keep it nicely in the lanes here, and uh, it's pretty smooth. Now turn right onto Benator Avenue. We'll turn right onto Caspian Street. So I want to give a quick look at the rear view monitor. So when you're backing up, I have it in reverse. You get this view with parking sensors that will uh, chirp when you get close to something. Um, they have different views here that you can do. Um, and then there's also a, uh, if you're backing out of a driveway kind of view, gives you more of a fisheye le uh, lens on, uh, give you a wider uh, viewpoint. So here you can see curb to curb uh, from this picture. So it gives you just that little bit more room if you're backing out of a parking spot or something like that, or laneway gives you that so you can change that. And again, this is a motion sensor. When my hand gets close, it gives me the options to come up.
All right, so here's a quick look at the main. Uh, this is the upgraded infotainment display. If I look at vehicle information, everything's pretty straightforward. Um, you know, some people complain about the snappiness of the software. I do find it lags a little bit, but again, this is first gen. I'm sure the software is going to get better with updates that uh, VW will do. So it's a vehicle status menus and uh, things that you can do in interior, setting some of the light features and this kind of stuff as far as exit lighting. So there's a lot of lot of good uh, basic menus. Uh, things you can that you can go through and then of course charging you can set it to uh, 80 to 100 percent whatever you want again vw recommends 80 percent as the norm tesla recommends 85 to 90 so everybody's a bit different but again 80 percent will get you you know 350 uh, kilometers or so on a good day which is more than enough for daily driving so it's a pretty decent menu system um, all your other stuff you know your nav the nav is pretty good it's a nice color display uh, all that kind of stuff well uh, you know where you want to go uh, whatever all that kind of stuff here um i'm just trying to see your contacts all kinds of things that you can do here I haven't really played around with it too much because i was more focused on trying to get the, the review going and now one other thing i want to show about this is i was mucking around with just trying to slide my finger across the screen but it does have a proximity sensor so all you do is wave your hand in front of it and it will change the screen wave it again to go to three because there's three different screens that you can drill into so i thought that that was a nice feature to have um, that you can so when you're driving you can just you know do that it, depending on what screen you want to get to and do different functions I think that's pretty nice the climate control works pretty good I have it off just so we don't get wind blowing onto the screen here onto the phone uh, but it has a nice auto feature keeps it nice and cool um, and all that kind of stuff and there are climate you know smarter things that you can set for different for quick cooling cool feet if you want to direct the air it does have rear vents as well so it's a nice easy climate control and then there are haptic buttons here for the drive and the passenger just to do quick changes to some of the temperature controls and the main passenger binnacle there's not a whole lot going on here it's pretty basic um, you get a couple different things that you can do you can do the um, adaptive cruise control the ECC here um, you got different elements uh, you can change the menu as well basically you can just have it uh, shrunk um, you can have it with uh, the driving features more prominent than the speeds or you can have it that that's basically it but one other quick thing if you now I notice that hey there's only two uh, window buttons here for down how do i um, open and close the rear uh, doors well, what you do is you push on this rear you see how it lights up it's haptic feedback and then the buttons work for the rear window so they only have two buttons and you just change if you if it's for the front if the rear is not lit if you want to roll down up and down the rear windows you put the rear so so volkswagen's thought this out they've got some nice features up here for the map lights um, also for the panoramic roof, there is this option which will let you close. There's a sunshade that'll roll across and it's a touch. You just kind of swipe. There's no button. You just swipe it across and it will, uh, it will close off. Um, and as you can hear and see now that it's uh, closing off. So you've got this nice, uh, uh, material. You can stop it at any time. You can also open and close it through the digital display, but I just thought I'd show this function because it was a little easier to, to show. Um, using this this glide control there's really no physical button you just glide your finger uh, through it which I thought was kind of neat uh, SOS button of course um, whether you want the uh, lights to come on with the doors open or not and then your button here for your hazard you've got climate uh, quick to parking menus if you want to park um, you've got your climate quick ones you can do, do your safety ass assist um, uh, functions if you want uh, them on and then you can do your different driving modes, of course, and I always like to keep it on eco, um, and that's how I roll. So there you go, just a quick synopsis of the menuing system. The shifter is pretty straightforward, easy to use. It just takes a couple times to figure it out in your standard stocks. So I talked a little bit about the range and efficiency before, uh, or maybe it's after coming up on this part, um, but I just wanted to show you. So yesterday I drove all highway, pretty well highway, about 90, 5% highway at about 115 into the wind for a lot of it and with the AC on because it was a 30 plus degree humidity Celsius day. Uh, this morning I don't have the air on. I'm driving and I drove to work and as you can see my efficiency is at 12. I had it actually at 11.9, 11.8 a little earlier and um, so it, it will be efficient um, you know under normal circumstances right. Um, I, I am keeping track of the ranges here and I'll, I'll have a chart coming up in a, in a minute a little bit about that now there is two modes as i mentioned earlier there's a drive and a b b is your regenerative uh, regenerative there's no paddles or any 
way to change the regeneration. It's set on one setting. It's called B mode. And it's almost, almost one pedal driving. You can come almost to a stop. It won't let you stop. It won't hold you at a stop either. There's no hold function here. So you do need to use the brake all the time to come to a complete stop and to hold yourself. If you let your foot off the brake, the car will move forward. Um, the ID4 does come with a front disc rear drum, again, for a for saving on money and cost. Just wanted to point out these couple of small tidbits of information um, that this car, this vehicle can be pretty efficient. Uh, and again, I'm driving in eco mode as well. Uh, for that, um, if I push the mode here, you'll see the mode. So I've had it on eco mode for the whole time. There's comfort, sport, and custom. I haven't tried the others. I'll probably try comfort later on. But what I'm trying to do is just to see what the what the range is for just normal daily driving, uh, doing my things, and uh, to get the best perspective in the nicest weather because now we're into summer and we get the nice temps. One thing I just wanted to uh, summarize again from an efficiency and range viewpoint i talked about it earlier but here's that chart again so as i mentioned i only had a couple of days with the vehicle i put a total of um, 271 actual kilometers but the, the number i want to 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 really take in is the kilometers projected and what that means is that's what uh, the vehicle thinks uh, how many kilometers i have for range on a certain trip so i take what it thinks it has when i start the trip and i take what it thinks it has remaining when I end the trip and I subtract those numbers and I get a projected range and I compare that to the actual. And that's what those two columns on the right hand side mean that um, the ID4 projected that I would have 262 kilometers of range during those driving circumstances, but I actually had 271. So you can take two things from there. One, it's pretty consistent in giving its range estimations. So it seems that the OEMs have got much better at that because I know at first, you know, it was kind of more of a guess than actuals. And second, it seems to be underestimating the range potential. And I know that it varies depending on driving situation, temperatures, uh, terrain, uh, loads, uh, all kinds of factors, wind, all kinds of factors that will uh, impact range on any given second, basically, while you're driving. But it does tend to formulate averages as the longer you drive. So I think that this held uh, its range and efficiency very well. As I mentioned, I had under an 18, 180 kilowatt hours per kilometer efficiency for this short trip. I know that as the weather warmed up uh, and, and I was driving more consistent in home, I could have got that down to a much better, probably under a 15 or, or ish uh, uh, number, 150, I should say. So I'm very, very impressed with the overall range and the capabilities of the ID4 from a battery management and a charge uh, viewpoint. Now, one thing I'm super stoked about this is pricing, and I have Canadian pricing here. You can check it out on the U.S. price list and uh, to see what it is there. From but from a Canadian perspective. I was a little concerned that Volkswagen would price this over the minimum threshold for the national Canadian uh, rebate that we have here, the $5,000 federal incentive program. But alas, they kept the base version just under that threshold at $44,995, which is great. And that's a standard version which gives you a lot of, it will give you the rear wheel drive with the single motor and a lot of goodies. Now this one has the statement package, which is an additional $8,000 Canadian, which gives you all kinds of other goodies. Without it, if you just take the base unit, get the federal rebate, you can get, and without a, you know, a, a, a substantial down payment or a trade-in or anything, you can be out the door in the low 40s. And I think that's a really good price for a vehicle of this size and what it offers from a feature. And I think that's a key to the Volkswagen ID4's success. I think they've priced the base unit extremely well for what you get. You know, you get decent efficiency, you get good interior space, you get good feature sets, you get a safe, nice visible machine that you can drive and good charging characteristics and an all around good package. Does it excel at anything? I'm not sure. It's not gonna be the fastest. It's not gonna charge the fastest. It's not gonna go the longest. 
So probably not, but it's good at everything, at pretty well everything. May not be great at anything, but it's good at everything. And I think that package is worth under $45,000 Canadian, especially if we can go out the door with the federal rebate on there. So that's good. I mean, it will tow 2,200 pounds. So for small utility trailers and camper trailers, you wanna put a bike hitch on here or a bike rack, you can do that. This will be able to do that and satisfy a lot of needs. If you wanna spend a bit more money and go up to $49,995, just under 50,000 you can get the all-wheel drive pro version and that again will give you dual motors will give you more horsepower more torque and some extra goodies in there the good thing is that the higher end model still qualifies for the five thousand dollar federal rebate as well so that fifty thousand after you add your taxes and everything, you take your five grand off, it will bring the price down to a reasonable amount. And that's a really well-equipped vehicle with all the goodies that you're going to need at any point in time. And I think that's a good deal. Now, the ID4 is initially coming to uh, Quebec and BC here in Canada first, uh, soon, probably in the July or August time frame, and then it'll come to Ontario after that, probably in the uh, early fall time frame, and then other parts of Canada as needed. Uh, and I think it's going to sell very well. Uh, again, with that base price point, you get a lot of features, you get good range. Again, we're only getting the one battery pack, uh, the 80, uh, 82 battery pack, kilowatt battery pack up here. Uh, and I think that's great for all use cases. So I'll stay on this quick angles and, and wrap up, uh, you know, with my final thoughts. To summarize the ID4 really is, I think, value. A Volkswagen understands what a lot of consumers want, especially from a utilitarian perspective. They build a lot of those kind of vehicles. And I think they've nailed it with the ID4. It's a very comfortable vehicle. It's got roominess. Uh, it's packed with a lot of standard features that you would find extra on a lot of other vehicles. The new design language I think is striking from Volkswagen. It carries through from the ID3, which is only in Europe to the four, and will move forward to the other ID models, all based on the MEV platform here. And I think it looks nice. Um, up here in Canada and some of the northern U.S. states and other areas that will get snow and ice, it's built for the winters. You know, standard features like the heat pump and, and, and a lot of the heated elements of the vehicle are great that you get that as standard, so it's going to help you a lot into wintertime. It's got good acceleration, you know, 0 to 60 in 5.8 seconds with the all-wheel drive. That's nothing to sneeze at. The, the number one reason that I think that this is a thumbs up recommendation, absolutely, is the price point. Both in the US and Canada, it's very competitively priced. In the US, you'll be able to take advantage of, of federal tax credits and really bring your price point down. And I think this is gonna get a lot of people that are on the fence about an EV that may not wanna spend the money on a Model Y to get a little bit more of a CUV experience and look at the ID4 as a good vehicle that's solidly built and that will get the job done. Uh, so I'm, my hat's off the Volkswagen I, to give you my initial impressions and some thoughts on it. I hope you found it helpful. And again, thank you Volkswagen Canada for um, le getting me this car. Uh, I feel blessed that I'm one of the first ones here in Canada to have a quick look at it. Thank you very much for that. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution show. The wind, uh, the hair windblown look today, folks. Sorry about that. Uh, we got a storm coming. Anyway, thanks very much for tuning in. If you're, if you're watching on YouTube, I really appreciate it a lot if you subscribe. Thank you very much. If you haven't, please consider subscribing. I'd love to have you on there. You get, if you click the bell as well, you get all that instant notification stuff. So thank you very much for watching. Again, I'm always humbled by my Patreon supporters. You know who you are. Your names go up in the end credits every show. Thank you very much for helping me out. If you're interested, click the link below and you'll get some more information about how you can support me on Patreon if you want to. And of course, my PSA, continue to stay safe, follow public health guidelines. If you haven't got your uh, shot yet, your vaccine, please do it as soon as you can. And continue to watch the EV landscape. There's a lot of stuff going on and it's exciting times, as I keep saying at each and every show. Oh my goodness, so much stuff. So until the next show again, thank you very much for watching. And again, stay safe and I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.